Uh, so next up um, is someone I think everyone in the party will be familiar with um, to present the uh, nominating officer report, Anthony Burrows. Hello, conference. I'm deeply sceptical of those who say there is no political solution, especially as, as they almost never say what theirs is. There are only three potential answers to the problems our people face. One, is get political. Two, run for the hills. Or three, some sort of conflict. There is no question that the political road is a hard road, but it's the only one we can go down if we want to get somewhere good for our people. So when a big mouth rules out any political solution, they are either a doom mongerer looking for an argument to justify their own deep-seated cowardice, or they're a Walter Mitty, a fantasist, playing at being a dissident for the sake of popularity, gaining a following through dramatic but useless gestures. People will say there is no hope. It's over. It's not possible. I say what is necessary is possible because we have within us, within our own people, the same potential as our ancestors who went through worse traumas than what we are going through right now. I've been described as a dangerous man because of views I allegedly support. Not that I've ever been quizzed on what my views actually are. I say any serious idea is dangerous, but in the civilised mind it is not. It is an instrument of peace. We are talking about the fundamental right to stick up for ourselves, our people, in our own homeland, as our ancestors have done. And there's nothing wrong with that. Many people have been busying themselves into doing something for the cause, but it's almost never geared towards the necessity of winning power. And most funding seems to find its way into the pockets of people who've ruled themselves out of the political solution. That culture needs to change if we want to see a political change. George Orwell once said, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And for me, that's right on the money. The truth is often hard enough. There is no need to add extra spice or any complications. Being radical certainly has its virtues, but we must also have an eye for pragmatism and common sense. Our people, and me personally, don't want a highly polarised ideological politics they want something that appeals to their deep instincts and what we already know to be true in our hearts. Nationalism and localism can achieve that, but it has to be put across in a decent and natural way. We must do our part to convince people of the dignity and the glory of politics and bring them back into the political sphere. We live in a society where people are trying to change things on an impossible level. They are trying to stop the weather, stop human instinct, end global poverty, even end war itself. Or they just give up. They only care about material and contingent things that are in front of them, things that affect them personally. Meanwhile, the middle ground of elected politics has lost all its dignity. The ground of reason, of pragmatism, of common sense has been given over to liberal and far-left ideologues at a national and local level. It's not just a question of shoehorning our people into positions of power. It's a question of convincing the public that things can change, that there is moral value in the civic sphere, that man is a political animal and he needs to pay attention. You can lay a lot of blame at the doors of our political enemies. But, it, but the reality is, it's a lack of attention and a lack of leadership that has allowed the corrupt and the unhinged to do so much damage. It's easy to disregard an outside group who parachute in when there's a problem, as ultimately they only represent themselves and their comrades. They have no direct tie to the people they claim to represent. It's easy to do the same to any party that throws money and resources at by-elections, a strategy that's doomed to fail without sufficient council seats having already been won. Providing political representation 
at a local level is a way to gain the much needed legitimacy and effect change. Just because you can't change national policy doesn't mean that you can't do something from that position, that you can't campaign and represent a constituency of people, or at least a large subset of those people, every time there is an issue that affects those people. The party will be six months old in a week's time. What have we achieved? We have six councillors providing representation in their local area. That's a stark contrast to those who play politics but don't provide representation to anyone. We have to start somewhere. Parish and community councils are the, are the tier of government that is closest to the people. It's a great way to learn the craft, a great way to gain influence and experience so that we can all move on to higher office in the future. We are now seeing some of our younger members who've put away the childish things and they've started to build as the foundational idea of a serious nationalist party is there to be built upon. No doubt some of these young lads will be the leaders of the future. What can we achieve going forward? Like I say, there'll be more seats between now and Christmas and I have no doubt that this will bring greater numbers. We will become a registered party. This is a certainty. And when we do, we will see a growth in membership. And no doubt some established councillors joining us as we will be the common sense party that the people have been waiting for with the policies and the solutions to back it up. The past is the past. What's done is done. But the future is very much so ours for the taking. We just have to reach out and grab it. Thank you very much.